Hi, everyone. This is Jason. Welcome back to the show. Joining me today is Satoshi. He is a content creator whose content focuses on technology and cryptocurrency. You can find him on Twitter at Hasoshi4 and on the Hasoshi YouTube channel, which I'll put in the link below. Thank you for joining me, Hasoshi. Yeah, yeah, I'm happy to be here. So I'm, I'm glad we're getting to connect up. Yeah, I mean, it, we, we've kind of talked a little bit online before. Yeah, but yeah this is the first time we've, we've spoken face to face. So it's, it's, it's great to meet you. And, you know, thank you for uh, joining me today. I appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, tell me a little bit about, well, first, tell me about how you got into crypto. And then I want to ask you a bit about the name. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, long story being short, 2008, 2009 era, I can't give you an exact date or time. I think it was probably fall 2008. Um, I was in class, it was in a computer class or like a programming class, clicking around on stumble upon and I came across the Satoshi white paper. Um, at this time, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life whatsoever. But I had interest in a lot of different things like in economics, like sociology, psychology, and obviously technology. And uh, this paper just spoke to me in a way that it was so cross-functional and it talked about a lot of these different topics that I was interested in. So after that, I just kept up with it. I kept reading about it. I printed out the white paper and I have it somewhere. It's like an annotated beat up copy of the white paper that I printed out right. um, just to remind me, I guess, where, where it came from. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I stuck with it ever since. And when I uh, continued with school, I started programming in Solidity because I was in a, a technology focused degree. And uh, the rest is history. I've been doing this full time now in this space for four years now. Nice, nice. So where'd the name come from, Hasoshi? So uh, I had a, at the time I had a client, when I started this channel that is, I had a client that would ask me similar questions. And whenever we'd go speak to someone else, you know, whether that be, you know, going to a speaking engagement or whatever, people would ask a lot of the same questions, whether it's about hashing most of the time, they'd be like, what, what's a hash? <laughs> and so fundamental to what crypto is all about and the technology behind it. But I was like, you know what, I'm just going to record a videos. And whenever someone asks me this question, I'll give them a brief answer, and then I'll direct them to the video, they can check it out. And I'll have to explain it in depth multiple times. Right. And that's how the channel started. So I took hashing, which is the number one question I got. And then Satoshi from the white paper mix them to show she and that's where it came from. Nice, nice. Yeah. Nice. My name is what happens when you watch too much Game of Thrones and you like technology. <laughs> it's a great show. And it's a cool name, man. No, no complaints there. I appreciate that. Um, so we were talking about it before we got started, but you know, with everything that's going on right now and, yep. you know, being that you're in technology as well as cryptocurrency, what are you seeing right now as a development for those of us who are stuck at home and having to, you know, try to make a living from our living rooms? You know, yeah. the uh, Naomi Brockwell in one of her recent videos pointed out uh, that we're moving towards a decentralized um, economy, a workforce. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get your opinion on that. You know, like we're seeing now that offices no longer matter. Yeah. But do you think we're going to start seeing more companies saying, OK, everybody work from home and we'll just send you what you need to do your job? Yeah, I do. And I think that this is going to accelerate the move towards a lot of different jobs that were traditionally, you know, live handshake style jobs, like including in financial services, where they just are giving you the tools to do the same job from home, mm -hmm. especially because for a long time, we've sort of been hyper globalizing. And it's been harder and harder for companies to put their people where they need to be when they have a client that's on the West Coast, a client that's on the East Coast, there's no way to make them put them in two places at once. Mm -hmm. I would also say that the, some of the biggest expenses for companies right now are travel, lodging, expatriation, and other things for employees uh, to be on site. So I would argue that it's, it's a huge cost savings and it's going to incentivize companies to, to go that route. Um, but a bigger theme that I think people should be thinking about is, you know, if you're following the U.S. election, which I don't blame you if you're not, it's a painful process to watch, but there's a talk about automation taking away, you know, people's jobs. Right. right. And, and this, I think this pandemic exposes some of the, the weakness and the, the risk to business models, even for big companies like, like McDonald's, when their workforce are human beings that are susceptible to disease. And then subsequently people that buy from them are worried about disease. I think that this is going to accelerate the process of making those jobs automated and making those jobs non-human. And mm -hmm. so that I think is going to, you know, 
free up people to do different jobs remotely from home and to upskill. Um, so I'm not saying doom and gloom, everyone's going to lose their job to automation. I'm saying it's going to free up people that are otherwise doing jobs that I think are below their level of intellect. And it's not doing what people are good at doing. And that's thinking and talking and interacting. Right. Well, and then you think that if we, the one upside to an automated uh, economy is that you don't have to worry about getting sick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The problem though, and this is where I think where our um, space is kind of missed it, but also has a potential to be that um, catalyst for people to be in a decentralized economy Yeah, is most people don't have the educational background to do technology yeah. at a level that would provide them a living income. Yep. Um, and unfortunately, and this is why I say we missed the ball, is our crypto and the blockchain space spent more time talking about price and less time on how to yeah. learn how to do this, in my opinion. Uh, no, I agree with you. Yeah. So it's just... I mean, I would like to, and that's one reason why I, I, your channel is so important and other channels like you are so important is that you actually talk about technology too. Mm -hmm. It's not just about Bitcoin is at this price right now. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, there's a place and time for that, you know, and it's not in my wheelhouse to talk about trading and, and indicators and those things. I'm very much a purely fundamentals guy. I don't even really, I don't trade crypto like that. I invest long-term in crypto because I believe in it. And so I, I believe that my niche is talking about how the tech works and making the tech make sense to someone who doesn't have a background that is, you know, software development or doesn't have a background in IT. I want to know how it works because white papers are dense. They don't make a lot of sense to people. And marketing speak is dangerous because it makes people want to make rash decisions about investing, which you should never do. So I think if you understand how it works and you still believe in it, then you can make a decision to go buy it. And I'm not going to make that decision for you, you know? Right. Well, and we always say this is not financial advice. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny to me, you know, <laughs> the, the one thing that I find interesting about what we do is as, I don't know, whether you like the term crypto influencer or not. Yeah. But if you're spending a lot of your time talking about how much it's worth, it's kind of financial advice, right? <laughs> yeah, in a sense it is, no, no matter what you say. So I, I think too, it's like the, the onus and the focus should be on the person swiping the card, proverbially, I say that. But it, it isn't because people go to content online to make decisions. And if, you're, if they're already halfway there, they're looking for confirmation. confirmation and there's confirmation right? bias that comes yeah. into that. If you're looking for, if you want to pull the trigger on Bitcoin, you're going to, naturally look for videos and make decisions based on videos that agree with your worldview. That's yes. just how people work. So you have to be a, as a creator and everyone at one point or another is guilty of this. It happens. Um, just be aware that that's, that that's the case. Yeah. Well, and a lot of things can be unsaid. It could be all about yeah. your enthusiasm and your yeah. mannerism when you're talking about a, a specific exactly. thing, you know? Yeah. And that's kind of what drives the tribalism. You know, be yes. because like if you're a if you're a Litecoin <laughs> enthusiast, people know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? people know it, and they they won't forget it. And they won't forget it. And, you know, yeah. you you're like the the second you put, hey, I like BSV. Oh, you forget about. It. <laughs> yeah, it goes crazy at that it goes point. Crazy, you know. Yeah, and ultimately, you know, I I actually. I find it to be such a waste of, of space and time because rather than focusing on the, the fact that all these projects are different and arguing about the, the fact based and the actual like heuristics of what's going on about with, the, with those cryptocurrencies, you have people talking about stuff that doesn't matter right. or completely ignoring the true comparisons and contrasts about what they, what they do. Right. Um, but you know, again, this is a, my friend, Steve McGarry, he runs the channel Hat Crypto. He says, uh, I think it came from his wife, though, I'll give her credit, he says it's a carbon-based problem. Like, this is a people problem, something that people created, not anything else. Right, yeah. Well, and, that, and that's true. And, and, and it, it kind of rolls into my next question for you is about how you're dealing with um, what's going on. And, 
and if you notice, I didn't say what is going on because yeah. a lot of people's videos are being demonetized because they're mentioning uh, the situation, the situation, yeah. or how we say now the Rona. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you they're, know, they're worried about it. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm hanging in there on it. Um, you know, luckily, you know, as I said, I do software development for a living, and um, I also do this YouTube stuff. You know, sort of just as as like a hobby on the side, and uh, I can do that all from my my home office, no issue. Mm-hmm. And and I'm very, I feel very blessed and lucky that I, I have that opportunity to be able to work from home and that I've been doing so already for so long that this, the culture of my work is not different. You know, the fact that I can't go out and buy groceries and I have to wait for deliveries and I'm, I can't order in food willy nilly, that sucks. But otherwise I, I can't complain, you know, right. just home with the family. Well, and it, it, most of us were already home bodies anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. at heart, a lot of people are home bodies and, and this, this too, I think it exposes the fact that people are, are so interesting that a Zoom call like this just energizes people. Like it's, it's, it very much mentally, I think for a lot of people feels like you're having a, a true social interaction just because yeah. that's where we are culturally. Yeah. Well, and then a lot of us, and especially in this space, know each other from online anyway. Yeah, you know, yeah, agreed. Like we don't, very, like the most time I've interacted with other people in crypto was at bitcoin 2019 mm-hmm. and when crypto indio has a meetup in la that's that's yeah. the most physical that's when you, interaction. you meet people yeah. yeah but generally it's like this you know yeah. and it's just and so it it didn't interrupt anything you know it's the hardest thing that it the most interruption that this whole thing did on my behalf was the motivation mm-hmm. you know because you look at the news and even though they try to put a smiley face on it yeah it's very dis- it's very depressing yeah it's it's difficult and my only advice and i know that this is coming from a place of complete you know i i hate to say the word privilege but really ultimately yes privilege because i can sit here and say like whatever feel good about it but if you look at the news all the time that's all you're going to focus on because mm-hmm. you know it gets stuck and, and i i fell into the same thing you know i'm, I'm always you know refreshing Twitter, trying to figure out the latest news. When is this going to end? And the reality is, is that I've sort of learned, like I, if you can't control it, you just shouldn't even bother it. You just, you can't, you can't focus on it. And then you can focus all that energy that you would spend on doing content, you know, going and trying to find yourself uh, a, a way to upskill your, uh, your current repertoire of things that you do uh, going on Skillshare, going online, watching YouTube videos, all this stuff helps. And, uh, I think it just, it's better for everyone's mental health to just not focus on it as much as, as much as it's hard not to. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a great point. Um, because a lot of us really just need to turn off the TV and go walk outside and get some sun. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, and that's the funny thing is, you know, people are like, Oh, I can't even go outside. Like this isn't like a rad nuke situation. Right. You know, <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, it's a, a pandemic and you should maintain your social distance, but you know, go outside, you know, uh, you know, my, the lady and I, we took the dog up, up the street. We walked a quarter mile with the dog. And, you know, it's, it's nice just to get some sun and, you know, do something else. Take a break from, uh, from being inside. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, Hasoshi, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um, everyone, we're going to link um, Hasoshi's information and his YouTube channel in the description below. And we'll try to get some more viewers on your side, because quite frankly, you're doing some of the best work I've seen in crypto. So you know, I, I really appreciate, appreciate that, that, that everything that you're doing and please keep it coming. Yeah, definitely much more to come and uh, make sure if you're watching this right now on Jason's channel, please do hit that subscribe button. Give him a like. Uh, great guy. We'll definitely do this again. I appreciate it. Yes, we will. Thank you so much. Yep. Cheers. Cheers.